Hello friends, um, today we are back with another video to talk about um, watercolors and again this is just trial, trial and error and working on a budget. I know that um, I didn't realize some of the watercolors that are out there which are beautifully pigmented, don't get me wrong, um, it can be very very pricey but for what I do with my watercolors, um, I, I'm going to show you guys the brands that I use. Um, again, this is just stuff that I've picked up over the years and that I enjoy using and that I like. So, um, this is just based on um, my budget, <laughs> for one, and just kind of trial and error and what I like and what I do with it, it works, they work perfectly for me. So, not to say I'm not looking always for watercolors, but I've learned to... Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the brand that I typically use most of the, most of the time when I'm creating. Um, I pick them up um, every once in a while um, when I, I go to little little craft place, which is here in Houston, Texas. And um, if they also have a storefront, I mean they have an online store, but I always pick them up when I go there. Um, but one, um, I teach classes there, and two, we have like play all day events there, and then. Um, Three, they always have this brand, which is nice because you can kind of see the different colors that come in each of the the styles. So, um, I, I think what I'm going to first do is talk about um, how I use them in my journal. Um, <clears throat> so, this is like um, I know I mentioned I have like a I have my day to day journal, which is just like the daily information about you know places I go. Um, different pictures, um, more of like family themed, whatever, and then this is more like my personal, uh, deeper writing thoughts, dreams, etc. So, um, as you can see in this one, I have already like started adding different watercolor to the pages, I, I mean adding backgrounds. Um, we'll go into this, these, I'm going to do it one more video after this one about prepping pages um, because I figured this one would just be watercolor but this is kind of watercolor um, this one has watercolor on it more watercolor so you kind of get an idea I just kind of prep my pages um, as I go along um, I thought I would do some pages here um, in this journal and I have some, some watercolor papers here some cardstock and then I have my um, everyday journal which is what I'm working in now and then we have the one that we've been working on um, for this uh, little series that we're doing here so let's go ahead and get started so basically what I'm saying is these are the journals I'm going to put paint in because how I work my steps is um, I watercolor and I set it aside and let it dry because it is takes a while for the um, the, the pages to dry so I figured since I'm going to be showing a bunch of different colors that you guys would I would need lots of little journals <laughs> um, the other thing um, also about watercolor and if if you don't like the crinkly paper or maybe it kind of let me see if this one bled through a little bit here on these pages um, I love the way it sounds once it gets like some watercolor on it but um, and this one I didn't double the pages in so um, it didn't really bleed through that one is a little bit of a double page but it didn't really bleed through so yeah, you know um, most of the time especially since we double the pages in here they're not going to bleed through. So I'm going to go ahead and start with, actually, since I have this one on top, we're going to start with this one. So I figured I would, what, how I would kind of work this, this, these are the very first watercolors I bought, and they still are a go-to. Um, and, and also, I do, this is just adding backgrounds. I was thinking because this brand here is, they're, they're both um, Hobby Lobby brand, that Master's Touch. Um, this one I actually used quite a bit because it has these metallic colors. I don't know if you can see, um, but they, I made a pumpkin one year and, um, in one of my journals and I absolutely loved it because I used some of these metallic colors to kind of make it shimmer 
and I have a I have another shimmery paint that I'll talk about in just a minute too. But these were my very first ever watercolor um, I purchased, and they are pigmented. Oh, I love my pink. You can tell I use pink quite a bit. Um, and they work. They work great. And of course, but this is when I started thinking, what else is out there? What can I use? You know, um, there's got to be more. So. Um, not more is not always better <laughs> so to speak but um there are colors in here especially the pink I, I don't know why i'm drawn to using pink a lot i think i've said that like three or four times since i've been doing this series but um the next thing for i i don't know the words you would use as far as like when you're doing your backgrounds you're really putting water paint color in the backgrounds but i use 24 uh rounded tip markers because they hold a lot of water and you can really like get a bunch of you know I know some of the other paint brushes I mean I have a whole slew of them but you're not gonna get a bunch of paint and water on these because they are they don't have the bristles so these are like definitely if I have anything to suggest these are definitely a go-to for um, for adding that water and getting that being able to cover a page so you can set it aside so because typically what I will do is uh, for example I will one evening say you know how I talked about like you can journal every evening or do something in your journals um, I uh, I'll come in here and just like add add um, paint so I'll just show you guys really like I'll get my pink action going on here but you just really and truly add quite a bit of water and then you just swoosh it onto the background now for example this page here and I don't you don't have to necessarily do the whole entire page um, but this one is a um, this one is a Loveland's life journal um, this paper here and then I kind of made it into like a junk journal where I added some different pages um, my journals that I make um, all have 28 pound paper in them which you can get if you want to make your own journals you could get like 28 pound or, or 32 pound paper that really is I think the trick I've been doing it for uh, years and I again let's see here it may bleed through a little bit but once it dries you'll still be able to work on the other page and if you don't like the wet crinkly paper don't do that I mean you know the crinkly paper that comes with painting don't do this don't do this step um, but that's it literally you guys it's and you just add a color to the background and I I for one um you know have a tendency to be like oh this is a page I can work off of versus kind of, kind of starting from scratch I'm like you know, I don't know, it just gives me a sense of like the page is prepped um, and we are ready to play in it. So, okay, so let's get into the one we were playing on. Now, we've already, you know, like I've already talked about adding some of the pages here. And um, so these are, so you see these are kind of pigmented too. I'll go ahead and use this style here. And again, these are um, at Hobby Lobby if you are you have a Hobby Lobby nearby they I bought these um, they do put their master touch paint on sale 50% off so you can get these as a good deal and see how pigmented those are they're beautiful and I'll use that metallic I was talking about too I don't know if you can tell but it's kinda got a I think this one might have a more of a shimmer this little teal blue color and once you and once it dries you really see it but I have used this this brown on on like a part of like the stems and stuff onto the pumpkin I made if I find that journal I'll I'll show you guys I'll kind of dig around and look for it but for instance for this one I really yeah I can't really see the blue but it does it seems like when I used it <laughs> prior but see this is the only pink that it has as a purple which it works fine too but again just kind of adding a little bit of color to your background this one I did a whole page on it's not necessarily how you have to but this is something that you can um, um, I mean and if all else this is a double layer you could come in and 
I've done this before too. Sometimes the pages bleed on on the other, you know, when you turn it over. But for the kind of journaling that I do, it's really okay because most of the time you just see peaks of this color through, you know, through the pages. I have to add some glue onto this. My masking tape was coming up. Can't have that. We'll have to add some glue. And I, I think I still have my old, old glue stick that's run out, ran out. But we can get a little bit more glue out of there. So yeah, so you kind of get an idea of swooshing, adding colors. Now, say for instance, um, I I do add shapes. Like like, like say for instance, I'm going to add a pumpkin. Watercolors are really, to me, easy to work with. You could kind of come in here and just add a shape, come back in with markers, and they do like a, their own little shadowing. You want to add like a pumpkin back here. Oh, my pumpkin's getting wonky. I'm okay with wonky. Wonky is good. And then, I usually always have like paper towel handy too in case you get overzealous with the watercolor but yeah so you kind of get just an idea okay so we've used these two brands again Hobby Lobby inexpensive works fine oh, oh the other thing that you really um, I think that would be the most thing you would want to watch for is a chalky base sometimes I've used watercolors inexpensive like and they leave like this chalky when you touch your pages it's almost like a chalky remnants I don't think I have any of those anymore because I don't I didn't like it because it's it's to me I want my watercolor I want my paint to dry um, so okay so we're moved into let's let's just add some color to this pages you can see I've kind of already started adding different colors but I'll go into that what I used here in another video um, on backgrounds because I'll do one more because there's a, like, a couple more steps three more steps that I'm thinking of right off the top of my head okay so these are the ones that I was talking about that I got from Little Craft Place the brand is Prima and I don't I think Hobby Lobby might use them Oh, my journal just fell. I was like, oh my gosh, what's that noise? Scared me to death. Um, okay, so each of them has like a, a name. So this is the Woodlands, which are like, you know, your outdoorsy colors. This one is like primary, the classics, which has all your classic colors. And you can see I have my pink that I use quite a bit. Um, this is called Pastel Dreams. These are more like, to me, they're more like a summer um, color. And this is called the Tropicals, which I guess could be a summer color too. You can see out of most of them, I use my classics the most. And I use these pastel dreams. But first of all, isn't that a beautiful picture? All the cut watercolors. <laughs> so, um, let's play. Let's play with them. Let's do some pastel dreams and some woodlands but like I said these run about I want to say like 30 bucks so yeah to me that's that's a bit pricey you know but they do last quite a bit so this is crimson color on the pastel dreams
and what color is this? This is Pond for you can see it's kind of a um, they're real like natural colors so to speak. Um, daylight so yeah so I, again I'm just adding blobs of paint and sometimes I really get artsy here and make sure I have what at the top is at the bottom. <laughs> Um, now, I did want to say, um, what was I thinking? Um, after, after I do this, I was, oh, I have a, one paint that I just discovered probably within the last two or three years that I really love for doing like more like, um, uh, I'll show you an example because I wanted to come and do a video of it anyway. So I've been kind of waiting when I have a little bit more time, but I drew out this little sketch here. Where is she? Oh, right here. And it says, let's play. And it has a cute little girl on there. And I'm going to come and do a, with a paint called gouache. And um, it's, I have discovered I love it. To me, it's kind of like an acrylic. At first, it was really strange for me, but now I've gotten really used to it. And um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to come in here and show you guys um, that paint as well. Um, just change the subject really quick. This, this is actually a letter, you guys, from... Um, I got it at um, Little uh, Pink Crafty Pink Crafty Cottages. Uh, I went there uh, to teach a little workshop at her retreat, at Mandy's retreat, and one of the ladies gave me a packet of papers, and inside that paper was love letters to, and that she had picked up at a estate sale. So I just love that. I love old handwriting. I love having letters written, and so I just kind of put that. Um, inside my journal and I will not I probably will not I won't be covering that up just because it's like of course down the line like why do we have this I have it what is this what is this paper what does this mean but I thought it was very romantic as you can see I busted out my classics which are my go-to colors and but see how the pink um it's not as vibrant as the other pink um now there are individual um, watercolor uh, like people that make their own watercolors that are you know shops out there um, and I, I would love to support them too but again I feel like I'm at a point unless I run out of my pink <laughs> I'm at a point where I'm okay with what I have okay so those are them the pastel dreams I mean not pastel dreams the prima prima marketing these I keep on my cart I have a cart that's out by the kitchen table because I work at the kitchen table quite a bit but I would keep these even at my I put in a new desk in my office on my craft room my um, art room so I, I'll probably show you guys um, in a video or something but um, I, I keep these pretty handy these are my kind of my go-to even though now that I've played with the other ones I'm like oh I like those too <laughs> um, and then, okay, so moving on, I did pick these up. These are Illustrated Faith, um, and I have used these quite a bit because they are your primary colors. But I don't, I, as you can see, I don't use them very much, and I don't know why. I think they're not as pigmented as color. It kind of runs out of colors, so I think that's probably why I'm thinking I don't use these as often. And then these can be found on Amazon. And they are all shimmery, you guys. These are the sparkly ones. So let's get the pink out. Let's see what it looks. As you can see, I haven't played with these very much. They're not very pigmented at all, but they add that little bit of um, shimmer once they dry. So, yeah, not, not that pigmented, but definitely adding some shimmer so those are them if you want to do like some sparkly ones and then last but not least let's see if we can play in the other journal maybe those those pages have dried let's see here yeah they're somewhat dry 
But see how you... Oh, that's where I messed up with the glue. But I was going to say, because sometimes... Um, if you turn your pages and they're not dry, you get it on the other page. Which, you know, in this kind of journaling, you're, it's probably perfectly... It's perfectly fine. Okay, so these are the ones that you can pick up, like at Michael's, at Dollar Tree... And I have used these. These are, I think these are the ones from Dollar Tree, you guys. I'm happy with these. These work too. And I don't think they leave a chalky film. I want to say I bought some. These look like I haven't even used them, to be honest with you. Sometimes I pick them up for classes or like giveaways. Have I not even opened these? I don't know. Well, that's... I don't think I've opened these. So, they might have been some that I picked up and I back, actually picked up an extra one. Oh, there they go. Yeah, I haven't even used these guys. Oh, yeah, I did. I used this one. Okay. I don't think these leave a chalky film. Um, because I have used these in some of my journals. And they're very pigmented. So... And they have the pink, which, you know, that's, ooh, pretty, pretty pink. Yeah, I don't think these, I don't think these leave that chalky residue. I bought some like this from Michael's a while back, but I want to say that the, oh, these are actually really pigmented. Um, I want to say that the ones from Michael's I bought had a white, um, container, and they did leave, like, a chalky residue. But you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree at for the, what was it? Wasn't it the $5 or $3, the plus that they have now? And, oh no, what did I do? Oh my ghost, I tore up my ghost. It's got a little hook on the back here. Okay, so yeah, so this these are beautiful. And I think I was surprised with these. I just recently bought these. See how love see how that just makes such a difference just adding a little bit of color to those that word that dictionary page we put in there. A little bit more pink. You want to do like a dark color, which is something I typically don't really do too much of unless I'm painting things. But since we've got this Halloween thing going, we could do a little dark. Oh yeah, look at the black. Just along the edges, it kind of makes it look a little bit more creepy. <laughs> okay, and then one more. And I actually took these from my daughter. I don't use these very often, but these are another shimmery ones. And um, they're, I do like them. I'll use these too. Let's see here. Should we do the pink again? Yeah, you can tell I'm obsessed with pink. But again, they're not real pigmented, but they will add that sparkle. Add a little bit more on this side. I don't know what this... Yeah, not very pigmented at all, but I can definitely see the shimmer. I don't know if you guys can catch that on film or not. I don't know. But see how the pages are creakly? So you're going to have that. Um, but when it dries, it, to me, it feels kind of fun. And um, my main goal is, is having paint that you can write on because that's what journaling is. It's also writing and adding things. Um, so, so yeah. So that kind of gives you my spill on the type of watercolors I use. And really, for this, what I do with my background, I'm smushing or swishing or... I don't know what you would call it, but the key to me is get you a paintbrush that holds the water and holds the paint so that you can cover those backgrounds. And you have your, your pages prepped. So I'll just set these out to dry, and then I'll ha I can then move in and add the rest of my um, items to the pages. So, all right, you guys. Well, I hope that helps. Um, I know it's kind of basic. But I will, um, I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.